Now let's go through the setup for the AppV5 client. Again, you can see that the AppV5 prerequisites website on TechNet uh, lists the prerequisites which are required for the client. And again, most of them are very similar. Uh, so you got .NET Framework uh, 4.0, full version, uh, Windows PowerShell 3.0, and also the Windows Update. It says here that the client installer will also detect if uh, Visual C++ redistributable is 2010 and 2005 SP1 are on your system and if they are not it will install them. It's also a good idea to install Silverlight onto the machine if it's not there already. So let's go through the installation here. let's browse to the mdop disk to install our client. Again, application virtualization for desktops and this time we're going to pick client. At the beginning screen, click install. You can accept, accept the license terms. Um, I'm going to choose I do not want to use Microsoft updates because I manage them myself. Uh, I'm not going to join the program. Again, that's up to you. All right, so we're going to let this install and I'll just fast forward. All right, and believe it or not, that's actually our AppV client installed. If you used previous versions of AppV, you may be wondering where a lot of the dialog screens are, because in the previous versions, you'd have to configure the AppV management server with the port, the uh, server name, the display name, and a few different settings. Um, with this version, it's actually a packager's dream, at least, because it's very easy to deploy. The configurations for this version can actually be configured using group policy. Microsoft released a group policy template in a DMX file which can be downloaded. Uh, you can use this for configuring I will the client settings. So you can see just for an example you can see you're able to set uh, the publishing server that it's going to be our AppV management server. Uh, you could set different things like coexistence. Uh, that's if you want to have 4.6 SP2 and 5.0 on the same machine. You could set things like if uh, files should be global or user. And there's a few different settings in there. I don't want to get too in depth into this because I believe if you're just being introduced to AppV it's a good idea to actually uh, do it manually for the first time so you can get a feel for exactly what is required to stream your application. So uh, let's actually do this manually and by manually I mean using PowerShell. Okay so now I'm back on my Windows 7 VM. I want to browse to PowerShell And first thing I want to do is set the execution policy. To remote signed. Okay. And now I want to import in the module for the app v client. Okay, that should be imported in now. So the next thing I want to do is actually add our AppV publishing server. I'm going to give it a name. Let's see. AppV publishing server is fine with me. And also need to point to the URL.
and on the end of the URL you want to put the port that you selected for your publishing server during the installation of the server piece. So I believe for my setup it was 317. Okay, I obviously did something wrong here. Let's have a look. Okay, so rookie mistake. There we go. I had spaces in the, the name, but I didn't put double quotes around it. So we could see the settings I put in there have shown up in, in a summary, and the ID is set to 1. So server number 1 is configured for those publishing settings. Now you can see that uh, global refresh is set to false. So what global refresh would do is that actually enables you to assign applications to uh, computer objects in Active Directory rather than users. Uh, older versions of AppV you could only assign to the uh, user objects in Active Directory. I'm going to leave that for now. I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with these settings. And for now, because I don't have any application imported, uh, there's no real way to test. So let's move on and sequence an application. And then we'll import it into our console. We'll come back to this client and we'll test it out by streaming an application.